Welcome to Mujer Latina today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and what an honor. For the people that they don't know you and they want to be, they want to learn more about you, how you get involved about with human trafficking? Well, about seven years ago, um, the FBI did a bust in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and there were numerous uh, victims of trafficking that they discovered at a truck stop. Um, and over half of them were from Toledo, and many of them minors under 18 and one as young as 10 years old and from Toledo. And that's the district that I represent. Um, so a number of the community members, along with myself, really wanted to find out what's going on in Toledo with you know, trafficking and, and our children being so vulnerable. So we put a coalition together under Dr. Celia Williamson and really started peeling apart this onion. You know, and onions, when you peel them apart, you, you begin to cry. And that's kind of the um, reality that we were facing and really wanted to do something about it. Um, so I thought, well, what can I do at the state level? You know, what needs to be done? A uh, Polaris Project, um, which is housed in Washington, D.C., and works with um, our federal government, really help solidify what all 50 states must do to combat human trafficking and they had model legislation so with that and along with uh, representative chandler at the time in the house and senator goodman um, in the senate we started really looking at this issue and putting forward uh, legislation for ohio the, so with is, that mm -hmm. it has taken seven years for us to really get to where we are today and realizing that we needed to build a grassroots coalition for the state of Ohio for everyone to become aware and educated about the issue and what kind of recommendations we needed in Ohio to combat this and really help all people who were being victimized. Um, and, you know, this is like a chameleon. Every time, you know, you have a new environment, the chameleon you know, kind of um, blends in and it's hard to see. Every time we learn about this issue and this crime, there's a new way of it cropping up. So um, this is a long-term issue for the state of Ohio and something that everyone needs to pay attention in. And I've really helped build that grassroots effort for us to be where we are today. This is the fourth year of this Awareness Day. Tell me about Linda Smith and why it's important for, for this event on January 11. Well, the Ford event is very important for us in Ohio because the first year was the year where we all got together and saw each other for the first time. Everyone has been exchanging emails and trying to build coalitions and get, get their um, elected officials aware of what's going on and what we need to do. And that helped us solidify the scope of the problem and making recommendations. Now, this fourth year, I was very pleased that um, Linda Smith accepted the invitation um, she's someone that I admire, and I, you know, she's one of my sheroes, if you will, former congresswoman from Washington State. Um, she became aware of the issue internationally as a congresswoman and was so uh, moved by, you know, the inhumane um, conditions of, of children and, and really many victims around the world that she started her own nonprofit, um, Shared Hope. And then as she started working on that nonprofit, discovered that there was a lot of victims domestically and so really helped um, be the other wheel like Polaris Project and help the states and, and really focus on uh, what I call, you know, the victims who become thrivers. You know, she's really worked on helping the victims become survivors, but not only survivors, thrivers. So I'm very anxious to meet her, number one. Number two, for her to share her vision of, of where we are and where we should go in Ohio. And so I'm very honored that she accepted. She has in her website rank, she ranks the states all throughout the United States, we rank C. How we can help and to be more proactive to eliminate human trafficking? Well, when we look at seven years ago, we literally were an F, you know, and I'm an educator That's by trade. Mm -hmm. um, we were a D, and now we're a C. 
So, you know, we always strive to improve. We've come a long way, but it's all about educating and advocating. And what I say, put on the glasses. So if this is invisible, which it is, it's very hard to detect. We must have education and advocacy be part of the um, huge effort for us to be able to see what we normally don't see. But if we become educated, we will begin to see. And I think the, the greatest um, effort of where we are in the state of Ohio is that now victims um, have help. You know, our message or my message has always been come forward. You know, the stigma and shame, we understand and we understand this crime. Yeah. So we're beyond that. We want you to come forward and get help. We will be there no matter what the issue is and, and what the victims are going through. We're working to collaborate and coordinate with all of our government agencies to number one, be victim centered, number two, to rescue. Why is it important for the Ohio community and for us, the Latino community that you're reaching out today, to be part of this event on January 11? Um, number one, that everyone is coming together to develop relationships, get to know one another, that there's benefit educationally, um, that we provide CEUs and CLEs for uh, lawyers and counselors to become educated and, and be part of the advocating community and taking it back to their community and looking for those victims to rescue. Um, and number two, to really help us see where we need to go next. It's so important for us to validate the data as we move forward because we need to coordinate more efforts with inner, inner, um, not in the curriculum, I'm a teacher, but the inner agency uh, bureaucracy to make sure that when we have a victim that their services are seamless. And the only way to really do that is to communicate with one another um, for the victims to know that we're here to help we cannot know what to do to help unless they're talking to us. Um, and really, we need to look at what's going on in our communities. You know, is it poverty? Do we need better health education for our children? Of course, we need better education for our children. So really, this is a social issue and a community issue that, you know, by taking a look at this problem and this issue, we are going to be able to really advocate and, be, and come up with real recommendations for our communities to become stronger, for our families to become stronger, and that it's okay to tell yeah. when someone is victimizing you that we're here to help. Um, and that's really hard because government seems like a huge bureaucracy, but it's made up of people. And if we do this right, we can truly um, cut through the crime and put real criminals behind bars. Representative, do you think that maybe people are unaware and educated, they are not informed about what is human trafficking? Exactly. I mean, they may not know what a victim is. They may not know what human trafficking looks like. Um, but when you think about the definition, think about this. You know, in America, we have our freedoms, correct? If you don't have the freedom to leave, then you are enslaved. Yes. And that's really where my principle begins and ends with trafficking. If you don't have the freedom to leave, and if there's fear and someone holding something over you, then that's wrong in this country. What message do you have for the Hispanic Latino community they're in, they don't know, they want to be part of this, and they would like to invite it, an invitation, share the invitation to attend this event on January 11th at the State House. Thank you for that question. Um, my message would be to come and feel welcome, number one. And number two, that there's a lot to learn from one another, and that no one knows everything. Um, that every situation is so different. Every victim has their own story. There isn't one particular victim story or a victim, you know, crime. It's it's really communicating with one another and trusting one another. Um, 
and really caring about rescuing anyone who is trapped or they can't get out or they know someone who is or there's someone that's not behaving appropriately in the community that should be. So um, with that, you know, we're going to be sensitive um, to all the issues that are relative to this particular crime and really help rescue, restore, and really coordinate all of our efforts in this country. And, and I've really had the opportunity to um, have a good discussion with President Obama's administration on what's needed in Ohio, and they're very interested. We've done a lot here in Ohio in a very short period of time, which I think is a model for um, the citizens of Ohio to understand we're gonna move quickly to rescue restore and correct this problem in our community. And it's going to be much more than just the human trafficking. There's a whole lot that needs to be done with education. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you once again. Thank you.